Throughout my journey into minimalism and frugal living, I'm constantly finding new items that I realize I no longer need in my life. Today I'm going to be covering 10 household items that you probably don't need either, and getting rid of them will help save you money, embrace minimalism, and just live more simply. Aerosol cooking sprays are overly expensive and extremely wasteful for the environment. Next time you're doing your meal prep, instead of picking up a can of Pam, just get yourself a refillable oil sprayer. I made the switch a couple of years ago and have never looked back. Not only is it saving a ton of cans into your recycling bin or trash can, you're also able to choose the oil that you want to cook with. It's usually pretty limiting for the options for those aerosol sprayers at the store. This way you're able to completely control your whole cooking experience with whatever oil you prefer. You're saving a ton of money in the process as well. Instead of using dryer sheets or fabric softeners, I'd highly recommend you pick up a set of wool dryer balls. These will have a similar effect on your clothes, but one, you're reducing all of the chemicals that you're using in your laundering process. Two, you're saving a bunch of money. It's a one-time purchase that's going to last for years and years. And three, your clothes are actually going to last longer. Things like fabric softener can really degrade the quality in the fabric, and um, using those wool dryer balls are going to completely eliminate that and you're still going to end up with an equally great end result. Also, if you're looking to repurpose instead of purchasing new, something as simple as tennis balls will have a really similar effect if you already have some floating around in your garage. I'm thoroughly embarrassed by the amount of disposable water bottles I used to go through when I was younger. I grew up and lived for a lot of years with really disgusting well water, so that was always my excuse. You know, I couldn't drink from the tap, so I just kept buying disposable packs of water bottles. There are a ton of alternatives that are going to be much better for your wallet, but also significantly better for the environment. I'm lucky enough here in Portland, we have really delicious tap water, so I don't need to do any filtering to make it uh, work worth drinking. But if you're in a place that doesn't have the best quality of tap water and drinking water, you know, pick yourself up a filter and a reusable bottle. It'll pay for itself in a very short amount of time and you're going to be saving the environment in the process. It took me a long time to come around and embrace a paper towel free kitchen, but once I did so, I really can't imagine myself going back. I used to use a ton of paper towels, you know, for cleaning and cooking and all sorts of stuff. It's very wasteful on your wallet and on the environment. A few things that my wife and I do to replace the paper towel usage. One, we repurpose old t-shirts that aren't really worth donating at this point. We'll cut them up and use them as kitchen and just general household cleaning rags. And then we also have tried a few different bamboo reusable paper towels that have been pretty successful as well. I know we're covering a lot of kitchen items here, but that is one of the biggest areas in your home to reduce a lot of this financial and environmental waste. There are a ton of really great alternatives out there with a pretty big range in price. One of the things my wife and I have started doing is reusing glass food jars from you know sauces and things like that that we purchase at the store. You know, you clean those out and you can use them to store food. It's, uh, you know, just like a mason jar, except it comes free with whatever food you're buying at the store. Uh, we also use a handful of mason jars with the set that we got at Goodwill quite a while back. And um, on top of that, if you're looking for something a little bit more dedicated and fancier, you can purchase something like beeswax wrap. Um, I've used this in the past and really enjoy it as well. Um, on top of that, you can get some, you know, higher quality, glass, um, you know, reusable food containers. Those are another really great alternative out there. One last big item from the kitchen that I know a ton of people surprisingly still use, and that is cake cups or reusable coffee pods. These are extremely wasteful in filling up our landfills. That's bad enough, but on top of that, it is an extremely expensive way to drink coffee and honestly make some of the worst coffee I've ever tried. One thing that I really love is the AeroPress. I think it's $25, uh, just about fluctuates a few dollars in price points on 
online. But the AeroPress is great, it's fast. I would highly encourage you to give that a look. Um, some other alternatives, I am a huge fan of my Chemex. I've had a Chemex for a couple of years now and definitely use that every single morning if you're looking for larger quantities. But you know, K-Cups are the single serve coffees. I would definitely recommend that you check out an AeroPress. They even have uh, reusable metal mesh filters for them if you want to get rid of the paper filters that they would traditionally use. Moving out of the kitchen and into the closet, uh, one big kind of general topic I wanted to cover is fast fashion. There's a ton of great info out there by more eloquent people than me. But fast fashion is generally, you know, following those quick trends and shopping at the really cheap stores that churn out new designs and styles constantly, which then encourage you to continue to buy clothes and get rid of clothes and buy more. And you're constantly cycling through these low quality clothes that don't last and will be out of style in a very short term. Um, this is a complicated one because, you know, if you want to really avoid that fast fashion, it can sometimes be expensive. And I definitely own plenty of cheap clothing myself. You know, this was like a $15 sweater from Target. Um, so if you're like me and you're still on a budget but want to be a little more eco-conscious and frugal with your wardrobe, you know, stick to simpler pieces that are going to outlast style trends. There will obviously be style changes, but if you stick to that simpler, more basic, timeless wardrobe, you'll find yourself needing to buy more clothes less and less frequently. I've talked about my capsule wardrobe on the channel here. Definitely check that video if you've missed it. Another closet item more so in the realm of clutter rather than waste is ill-fitting clothes. You know, a ton of people I know all have these gigantic wardrobes and they have so many clothes that don't really fit them well. And they'll think, you know, maybe one day I'll fit into this or just in case I gain weight or lose weight, I'm gonna hold on to this. You know, get rid of all that stuff that doesn't fit you. If it doesn't fit you well, you're not going to wear it. And if you're not going to wear it, why do you have it? You can make some extra money by reselling that clothes or you can donate it to someone that might need it more than you. While we're still on the topic of decluttering, I want to talk next about physical media. You know, and that's books, video games, you know, physical discs for movies and TV shows. Uh, you can so easily get rid of all of that stuff now with very little repercussion. Um, obviously, everyone's situation is going to be different. Maybe you're in a place that doesn't have really good internet for streaming and, you know, situations like that might be a little bit different for some folks. But in general, I think the majority of us, you know, it's never been easier to keep all of that media digital to declutter your home. I know this can be a tough one. You know, a lot of book readers swear by reading those physical books, but, you know, check out Kindles with e-ink screens if you never tried one. They are really great. I doubted it until I tried it. I've had my Kindle paper white now for six or seven years and absolutely love it. You know, video games now, it's never been easier to buy digital copies of things and they even go on sale pretty frequently, just like physical discs and movies and TV shows. Obviously, streaming services have never been stronger. So get rid of those things and embrace the digital media. To all the other animal lovers out there, it's time to quit buying and declutter some of your existing pet toys. I know I'm super guilty of this back when we got Wolfie in 2017. I bought a ton of different toys at the store for him to play with and have fun with. You know, it's really important to make sure that he's getting his activity in and all of that sort of stuff. But what I've noticed over the years, he seems to prefer toys that have been repurposed from what would otherwise go in the recycling bin or the trash can. Things like crumpled up pieces of paper or foil, you know, old shipping boxes, the classic cat in the box sort of thing. Um, he definitely likes those types of toys a lot more than anything I ever bought for him at the store. And I'm speaking of this more in a cat focused way, but I've been a dog owner in the past and uh, there's definitely a lot of this can be done for dogs as well. I think it's much easier for cats though. So any cat owners, you know, try ditching some of your, you know, plastic or um, wasteful pet toys that you might have. 
get rid of the clutter out of your home and just let him enjoy some of the things that would otherwise just go in the recycling bin. Before we continue, I wanna take a minute to talk about the sponsor of today's video, and that is Skillshare. If you haven't heard of it, Skillshare is an online learning platform. They have thousands and thousands of different classes. They cover photography, design, entrepreneurship, even some lifestyle sort of things like increasing your productivity and being happier. I've currently been enjoying How to Be Happier, a Stoicism Masterclass by Ali Abdal. He's actually another YouTuber, so definitely check him out if you haven't yet. That one's been great. I've been a huge fan of Stoicism since I first learned about it five or six years ago. Skillshare Premium costs less than $10 a month with an annual membership, and if you sign up with the link below, the first thousand people will receive a free trial to Skillshare Premium. So definitely, please, please, if you haven't checked it out yet, go do so. It's awesome. So huge thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video, and that is is gonna wrap it up for all of the tips here. This is definitely something that is ongoing for me and a work in progress. I'd love to hear what household items you have gotten rid of. Uh, critique my list here, add to it. Maybe we can do another one down the road soon. Thank you all so much for watching though, and I'll talk to you in the next one.